Okay, we are discussing series circuits first. Those are circuits with a single loop for current to flow through, like this one. And we were just discussing, we'll have three rules, one on resistance, and the resistance which we, could, which we showed in our lab was that the total resistance in a circuit like this is very, very close to the sum of the resistor values. We'd also have to technically add in the resistance of the wires, but we did skip that. So it'll probably be close and we can summarize it that way. Now, Kimmy, what was the rule that we learned about voltage? It'll always equal the total if you add up the voltages that are dropped on each of these, they'll add up to the battery voltage. So the sum of the voltage drops, we call them, equals the battery voltage. So just to put that in perspective, we know a voltage is, it's energy. Our source is here, and electrons only have so much. They get 3.5 volts of, of energy that is spent as they go through a circuit and travel from one end of the battery to another, no matter what's in that circuit. So the when you add up these voltage drops, the amount of, you're looking at the amount of energy lost as it goes through this resistor and this resistor and this resistor, and they have to add up to that total. That's what that second rule means. Also, what can you tell me about the role that these different resistor values plays in how much voltage gets dropped across them? From your data, which resistors have the biggest voltage drops? Sorry? Five. The fives? Yeah. What do you mean? You mean resistor five? Yeah, resistor. What was what was significant about the value of resistor five compared to your other resistors? It was the largest. Does that hold out? Does the do the lar does that hold out that the larger the resistor, the larger the voltage drop for all of your circuits? Good. Bigger resistors take more energy to push uh, electrons through. So the bigger the resistor, the bigger the voltage drop. Now they'll still add up to this battery voltage no matter how you stack it. But larger resistors mean larger voltage drops. <coughs> The drop here means that we're losing that much energy going through something. How would I draw the device that would measure the voltage across something? We'll get your question next, okay? How would we get the device that would measure it? You would draw it like going off of one of the resistors. So describe how. What do you mean off of one of the resistors? Like so let's let's take this one. I, I can judge by your motions like this. Right. Like that? And then you would draw the little circles here. Right? Circle with a V for the tool. So voltage is always measured across something, and it's a drop. So it's measuring how does the energy of an electron change from here to there. And we would always put our the two probes on the two sides of something to measure it from those between those two points. What was your question, Chris? Well, it's, it's a dumb question, but what do you mean by drops? So drop means the loss of energy. Oh, so you're like saying like how much it drops? Ex like, yeah, that's exactly okay. it. Not like a drop? Not no, drip. not like a drip. Okay. <laughs> um, it means a lessening of. So it's how much does the voltage lessen from here to there? Okay. And then we have voltage sources as well. Um, so we, when we use the la that language, either voltage or voltage drop, we really mean the same thing in this class especially. 
that it's just what is the change in energy between two points? Not a dumb question. Okay, and then the last rule will be about current. Current, I, we kind of, I kind of implied this one for you uh, rather than had it being you measure it. There was no particular place you had to put your current measurement. There is a correct way to hook it up, but there's no real correct place to put it because any electron leaving our battery has to go through all three resistors in order to get back to the other side of the battery. That means that all of the current going through here must go through all of the other points and the current has to be the same everywhere. So I'm going to say current is the same throughout a series circuit. <coughs> We aren't really going to do, be doing calculations on full circuits. We've got a little bit using Ohm's law, but not on full circuits. Um, so we're not going into greater detail on that, but I do want you to know those three main points. Uh, last thing is, it doesn't really matter exactly where the, the ammeter goes to measure current, but it does matter how it's hooked up. How would I draw an ammeter in this circuit? that indicates that I'm measuring current. It's a circle and an A. Where would I, how would I connect it? In place of one of the wires. So if I erased part of the wire, so let's say I erase this wire, I could replace it with my A in a circle and then put new wires out. And I could put that at any point in here aside from not part of the voltage loop. A current is always measured through something. That's worth noting. So current is measured through a circuit or object. Voltage is measured across. So if you think of this sort of like flowing water is often used as an analogy for a flowing electricity. If you want to know how fast the current of water is flowing, you need something down in the water. Maybe you have a turbine or something turning like that. If you want to uh, get across, the, uh, across it, you're going to have to build a bridge. So voltage is like a bridge from this point to that point. What current gets measured going through. Okay, that's series circuits. Does anyone have any questions that they want to address on one of these points before we, before I erase it? Okay, we're going to talk about parallel circuits. Then. still have our batteries. Start by drawing, in my case, a single resistor. But then now instead of adding more resistors in this loop, we add additional paths. So a parallel circuit is distinguished by having more than one path that an electron could follow. So more than one.
one path for current to flow. makes most sense, I think, to start with voltage for this. So from your data, what can you tell me about the branch voltages, the resistor voltages in our terminology in lab? Look at your voltages. So this is now lab F. Look at your resistor voltages, just one circuit at a time. So what can you tell me about it? Going down, yelling timber. <laughs> How much is it going down? <laughs> Point seven each time? No, I don't believe you. Someone yeah, Megan. Would it be that the resistor voltage is equal to battery voltage? They're awful. They should be really, really close. They're probably going down a little bit the farther you get away. That I believe. But if you measure the voltage here, well, look, it's basically connected back to the battery with wire. Wire doesn't, you don't lose too much energy through wire, you lose it through your. Uh, resistors. So an electron going out and choosing this path is going to lose almost all of its energy right in this resistor and come back. Likewise, an electron choosing the second path is going to lose its energy in this resistor as it goes back and through the last resistor. So not much is lost through the wires. These resistors are basically all connected back to the battery. And so what you should find is that your resistor voltages are all really similar. Maybe slightly different, but very similar. Um, and for our rule, we're just going to say that the branch voltages are all the same. What do they sit also the same as, or in your data, probably very, very close to? the battery voltage, right. And that's again because, so the voltage is a measure of energy, you get the source of the energy, electrons lose that energy as they go through a circuit, but each electron is really only going through one branch. So it's giving up uh, almost all of its energy just in one of those two resistors. So when we measure across it, that's what we find. What can you tell me about currents and specifically the branch currents and the battery current? So we, had, we measured the current through each of these resistors as well. What are you thinking, McKenna? Are they each the same? So they're not each the same. So what do you mean by they're the, very similar to the current supplied by the battery? The sum of them is the same, right. The sum of branch currents is the same as the current from the battery. So I'll say that if sum of branch currents equals the battery current. And that makes logical sense because if you've got current coming out of the battery, I 
Some of it is going to go through branch one. Some of it's going to go through branch two. Some of it's going to go through branch three. And if you add up one and two and three, it's got to equal that whatever is coming out of the battery. Can't come from anywhere else, and it's not going anywhere else. And then likewise, it's going to join back up. on the bottom here and go back in that way. Okay, and then that leaves the most, probably the most unsurprising finding, which is dealing with the total resistance. When you look in your analysis, I ask you to use the voltage and the total current coming out of the battery to figure out the total resistance in the circuits. What happened to that total resistance as you added resistors? It keeps going down. Every time you add a resistor, it goes down more. And in fact, if you look, it's also always less than the smallest resistor you have in your circuit. So in my circuit, it would be less than eight ohms. Double check as, you're, as we're writing this, um, that, if you did these calculations as prescribed, then that is what you will find. The total resistance is less than the smallest branch resistance. talk about why because that one doesn't you add a resistor and it gets smaller even if you add a big resistor the total gets smaller that's looking at the total resistance of this whole circuit kind of like you were a battery supplying current to it and what it's saying is that every time I add a branch I have to increase the amount of current supply so if I'm a battery I, I know my voltage I can measure how much current is coming out of me, but I don't really know what the rest of the circuit is like. It's just governed by Ohm's law. If I add another branch, let's say you're at the supermarket or whatever store, and you've got a pretty good checkout clerk who's moving a lot of people, and then another one opens, and that person stinks. They talk too much and they make mistakes but now you've got two lines open. Person one is still moving the same number of people through, and now you've got another person. Even if they're slow, more pe total people are getting through the checkout because of that. Add another person, it's even better. That's sort of like how electrons are moving here. More electrons move through small resistors. It's easier for them to flow through them. But even adding a bigger resistor allows a few more electrons to go through. From the battery's perspective, adding even a high resistance and allowing a few more electrons to go through increases the current. And if your voltage doesn't change, increasing the current must decrease the resistance. Just makes it easier for electrons to flow from one side to the other. That's what this rule means. I have two more questions. How would I connect a voltmeter to measure the voltage of branch three, where this eight ohm? How could I figure out the resist or the voltage going through that or dropped across it? Sorry. Got a bunch of people who haven't answered yet. Donna, you want to give it a crack? Think of it, we're voltage across. Not that way, 
that's through across When you're measuring voltage, you put a probe on the two sides. You should have answered. Yes. I enjoy our talk. I thought I had the right answer, and I did. I didn't answer. So voltage is across. So if you wanted to measure any of these voltages, you'd hold your voltmeter to the two sides, but all the rest of the circuit stays the same. Now. Current in uh, resistor one. Now, Dharma. Do you want to connect the one wire? Okay. The... Current meter, the ammeter yeah. is what we call it. Yep. Like so. Because current gets uh, measured through. So this would measure the current that comes out s branches here. Some of it goes through this. Uh, part of the circuit and we'll measure it then. The stuff that goes on, we ignore. We don't know what's happening out here with that measurement tool. So, and so the, the voltage across and the current through mean the same things in parallel circuits as in series. Um, other parts, going to looking at the proficiency to know for tomorrow. So we've got the differences in how electricity flows through the two types of circuits. We're not doing math on those. Uh, we've got definitions of circuits, series circuits and parallel circuits. Definition of voltage, resistance, and current. Those are already in our notes. Uh, it also says draw circuits using the appropriate symbols for batteries, bulbs, resistors, ammeters, and voltmeters. So like this, we're not, I'm not going to have you do that on the test. You've done that in your notes. but you should be able to recognize where, when one is hooked up correctly. So it'll be more of like a multiple choice. Which of these four is doing this? Or is showing this measurement or this sort of connection? 24. It's a long quiz, but very short for a test. 80% for proficiency, as usual.